What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to destroy tabs with PyQt5 and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to destroy tabs. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, in the last video, I showed you how to create tabs with PyQt5 and the designer. And just sort of in passing, I talked about this little destroy button and I showed you how to add that, but I didn't show you how to actually connect it to the back end and, and actually make the tabs disappear when you click on those, because by default, they don't. And a lot of you guys reached out and said, hey, how do you do this? So in this video, that's what I'm gonna show you. So you see, we have these little X's on here. We can click on it, boom, it disappears. Now there's only one left, it disappears. So that's what we're gonna look at in this video. So I've got my PyQt5 designer set up. I've got the same stuff we had in the last video, picture of me and Aspen, uh, several tabs here, you know, just random stuff on them. And if you don't know what I'm talking about here, go back and watch the last video in this playlist. The link is in the pinned comment section below as well as the link to the code. If we have code, I think there will be code in this video. There wasn't in the last video because we just did designer stuff. But check that out in the pinned comment if you haven't seen it yet. So we want to make these destroyable or deletable or whatever you want to call it. So go ahead and click on any of these and then come over here. And these are all the different options that we looked at in the last video. And you see we have this tabs closable. If we click on this, boom, these guys appear. Now the thing is, if we come up here to form and preview and build this thing, and if you know if I click on this, it doesn't actually do anything. So we need to actually write some code to destroy these tabs whenever somebody clicks on one of these little X's. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and save this. And I'm just gonna come up here to File, Save As, and I'm gonna call this Tabber. And I'm saving this in my C PyQt5 directory. This is the directory I have all my PyQt stuff in. This is the directory that we opened the designer in in the last video. So call this anything you want, I'm just gonna call it Tabber. Go ahead and save. And now we've got this tabber.ui file. And if you don't know how to convert this into an actual Python file, I'm going to do it right now really quickly. I'm not going to talk about how I'm doing it. You can go back and watch a prior video in the playlist where I walk you through all of that. It's really simple though. All we have to do is head over to our terminal and you can see I'm in my C slash PyQt5 directory. I've got my virtual environment turned on, which is important. Now we just have to, if we type in ls, we can see there is that tabber.ui file that I just created. Now we just need to convert that into Python. And to do that, we just type in pyuic5 and then dash x. And now we just name the file that we wanna convert. In this instance, it's tabber.ui. And then we wanna go dash o, we wanna output it. What do we wanna output it as? Well, we wanna output it as tabber dot pi. Name it anything you want, but I tend to name these things the same thing they are earlier. So tabber UI becomes tabber dot pi, right? Sort of basic best practice. Uh, but name it anything you want, go ahead and hit enter. Now if we type in ls, we can see we've got this tabber dot pi file. So now we can head over to our sublime text editor, and we can open it. So let's go file open file, and navigate to your C pi qt5 directory and just look for that tabber dot pi file and here it is and we can open it. So I'm gonna get rid of these comments. I always do that, save that. Now this is the, the file, basically the Python file that the designer created. Well, the designer created a UI file and then we converted it into this Python file, but you get the idea, this is the Python stuff. And you can see in here, we've got our tab widget. We've got it set to a qt widgets dot qtab widget, you know, function here, widget, right? And that's cool. Now, if we run this thing, head back over here, we can run it by going python tabber.py. And when we do, it pops up. There it is. Very nice. And we've got these X's. But of course, when we click on them, nothing happens. We can tab, right? But we can't destroy these guys by clicking on them. And that's what we want to do. So how do we do this? Well, actually, really simple. Just head back over here. And we can do this in this function here, I suppose, just kind of scroll down to the end of it. And I'm going to define a variable called tabs. And I'm going to set that equal to self dot tab widget. And that is just if you look up here, 
Uh, where did it go? This this guy right here, our QTab widget instance or function or whatever you want to call it, the widget. And we've set it equal to self.tab widget. So I'm going to take this and assign it to a variable. So that's all of our tabs, right? So here is a variable with all of our tabs. And now we can go tabs dot tab close requested, right? And then we want to connect and we need to, to run a Lambda, L-A-M-B-D-A and set that equal to index. And then tabs dot remove tab and then index. So this is a number, I suppose, of which one at the time we want to close or destroy or remove or whatever. Now notice this, this looks a lot like a capital L. That's not, it's a lowercase L. This is a capital L, right? See how it's white and it's very angular, right? This is a lowercase L. It's got a kind of swoopy thing on it. I hate that Sublime Text does that. It makes it look like it's capitalized and it always confuses people. And I know I could go into Sublime and update the font to make a different font, but I like this font except for this. So I just have to point out every time we use a lowercase L that that is in fact a lowercase L. So, all right, so again, it's tabs, which is this guy here we defined, and it's just tab close requested. The C is capitalized, the R is capitalized. And we want to dot connect, run a Lambda with the index of tabs dot remove tab, tab is capitalized, and then we pass in index. So, okay, that's all there is to it. Now, if we run this guy one more time, we see, here we go. We can click this, boom, it disappears. We can click this one and then boom, it disappears. We wanna get rid of them all, boom, they all disappear. And that's all there is to it. So pretty cool, pretty easy. And wow, this is a quick video, but a lot of people reached out to me and were like, hey, how do we get rid of these tabs? You know, this is kind of neat. How do we do that? Well, two lines of code is really all it takes. and you know, thinking about it, it's not really intuitive. I don't know why in the last video I was like, oh, it'd be easy to do. You should be able to figure it out. Well, no, it's, <laughs> it's a lot. It's, there's nothing intuitive about this code right here, right? So now you have it, make a note of it, write it down. If you ever want to use it, pretty easy. And that's all there is to it. And that picture continues to crack me up. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. You pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.